guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about the Medical Coder Clinic Shuffle and some strategies for success. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. Okay guys, let me define what I mean by Medical Coder Clinic Shuffle. What I mean is you get hired on to code for something, a particular specialty, and then all of a sudden they're pulling you to go help in other specialties. That is a situation that happened with this viewer who made this comment. And as you know, that my episodes are inspired by your comments. So I do read the comments and emails and other comments on other social media outlets. So if you ever have a situation you want to talk about, let me know. <laughs> uh, but this viewer left this comment and I think it's a really good one because you may find yourself in this position when you get going in the medical coding career field or maybe you're already in the career field and you're like what do i do now <laughs> so here we go all right so the viewer says found this at the right time my issue is not the coding itself but the job i'm working through a contractor and getting tired of being tossed into different specialties i was hired to do podiatry today it has been so hard because i've been asked to work cardio for the last four months no prior training in any of any sort in it it is just mentally draining and i've been in other parts of the medical field for 18 years prior to coding so the medical documentation ain't new eh. all right so they said eh. <laughs> um here's the thing when you get certified in medical coding whether you have the ccs the gold standard of medical coding credentials the cca the ccsp or the cpc this tells employers that you can code for any specialty because all of these are testing on all of the specialties so these credentials say you have the competence to code for these specialties so when you go in into a place and you're you're hired to code for in this case podiatry and then all of a sudden they're pulling you to go help out in cardio you know that's part of the working environment and you know when you get hired on they say um, you will do this this many per day you'll have this kind of accuracy and you will do other duties as assigned this is the very definition of other duties as assigned so when you they say okay we have a podiatry coder everything's caught up in podiatry we need help over there in cardio maybe somebody's out or whatever we're going to go pull the podiatry coder well, the podiatry coder gets thrown into the um, cardio clinic <laughs> or the cardio and they're like, okay, I've never done this before. You can't wait on people to train you. You have to be the proactive one when it comes to how do I code this? If you don't have experience in it and you're just waiting for somebody to train you, you're going to always be at the mercy of other people training you and other people training you is not always a good thing because um, not everybody has the same knowledge base and a lot of times when these these leaders and and for like medical coding medical coding supervisors get into these positions they forget what it's like to code because their their job is to be the manager right their job is to make sure that everybody's doing their productivity like they're supposed to maintaining accuracy that's what they do and so sometimes they forget and sometimes they may pull you because they really need help and they, they're expecting you to know because you are certified. And so that's why they're, they're probably not gonna train you and they're probably not gonna give you a hand unless you say, unless you speak up and say, hey, I have a few questions about this. Or maybe you can talk to the original uh, coder if they're still there or somebody else who does that as well, you know, if you have any questions. But if you find yourself in the situation where they're constantly pulling you to go into these other clinics, don't panic. You know, the best thing that you can do is start to familiarize yourself with the myriad of ways that you can get really good at coding different specialties. And the great thing about that is you're not just pigeonholing yourself into one specialty. You're giving yourself a variety of specialties that you can add on to your resume. So that if you decide, I don't want to be pulled all the time to go here and go there to these different clinics. If I like to code podiatry, I'm going to go and apply at a podiatrist's office or a podiatrist specialty clinic where I can only code podiatry. 
And if that's, that's when you just, the buck stops with you and there's nothing else that you're doing other than coding for podiatry. But you got to be careful because if you don't exercise, you know, different specialties, you're going to miss out on other opportunities. You may have the chance to go someplace else and they may say, okay, well, what have you coded? And if you were to say, oh, I've only coded podiatry, well, maybe they need somebody who does neurology, or maybe they need somebody who has experience with OBGYN, and maybe it's a really sweet assignment. And if you've never given yourself a chance to do that, you could be missing out. So don't look at this that it's, oh my gosh, it's so mentally draining. It is to a certain extent because, of course, now you have to learn something new. A few years ago, <laughs> story time. So a few years ago, um, I had been working in the orthopedics clinic. I, I work currently in orthopedics and podiatry. They are mine. <laughs> These clinics are all mine, okay? And I take a lot of pride in my clinics because uh, I have worked with these providers. I've cultivated my relationships with them. It takes a lot of time and a heck of a lot of effort. I'm just going to say that. Well, I got pulled. And I have, I have coded several places before. I mean, I've coded for inpatient professional services before. So basically outpatient in a bed. And I've seen every single kind of specialty, right? Um, but this time, you know, I had been very comfortable in my position, you know, coding for orthopedics and podiatry and keeping my hand with them. <laughs> but again, like I said, I was coding with a partner at the time and I got pulled out of orthopedics, just orthopedics. I still got to keep podiatry, but I got pulled out of orthopedics and um, I was told that I had to now code also for neurology, pulmonology. I think those were the two. Yeah, neurology and pulmonology because they needed, oh, and rheumatology. They needed somebody, my supervisor was like, you, I need somebody who can get in there and who can really help find out what's going on in these clinics because we just, the coding's not coming out right. And I'm upset and mad because you just took away my baby. <laughs> you know, you took away my most favorite clinic with working with surgeons who have been a challenge to some to be able to work with and I had cultivated those relationships and I was very proud of that and I was of course upset you know like why are you pulling me for this you know I, I don't care about these other clinics I care about that clinic and, and my supervisor was like I need you to go and look and find out what's going on with these clinics blue because I need somebody who's gonna be in there and digging she goes I know you're gonna dig and you're gonna find out the answers and you're gonna find out what's going on you're gonna get it back on track and I need you to do that. So I said, fine, you know, <laughs> I tried my tears because again, I was upset, you know, um, but I went in there and I didn't have anybody to ask questions to, and I didn't have anybody that was going to train me. So I literally, the, the second I got in there in those clinics, I familiarized myself with the different specialty websites. Um, there's the American Lung Association that I went to for the pulmonology clinic. And when I went there, I don't want to talk about them specifically because they were the ones who, who were in the most need of help. And so I was like, okay, so I started looking at, and I had never coded for the pulmonary clinic before, like itself with, with the testing and things like that. I'd never done that. I've done pulmonology coding, like the diagnosis and stuff, but I'd never done like the procedures, like the spirometry and all that other stuff. I'd never done that before. So I went to the American Lung Association and I started doing research and I didn't do very much in productivity that day. And my supervisor knew that she knew I was going to have to have time to research and do all of these things. Cause I told her, I was like, you know, I am not familiar with what they do there. So let me do some research and then I'll get, get going. And she goes, oh, of course, you know, whatever you need. Um, I know that you'll get, you'll get up to speed. And it took me about two weeks to get up to speed as far as like, okay, I didn't code so many on the first day, but I started to code more and more. And again, two weeks, it took me to get in there and, and figure out everything. So I went to the American Lung Association. I looked at all of the different um, procedures. And of course, I did a deep dive into the anatomy. I checked out the pulmonary section in the CPT manual. Um, then I went to the clinic itself. And I met with the clinic chief and I met with the nurses and I met with all the other techs who do these um, procedures. 
and I ask them questions. What do you guys do here? Because according to this, um, these codes that are selected, they, they say that y'all do these commonly. They're like, yes. I said, tell me what this is. What does this involve? So I was very hands-on with getting them to like, okay, we, we do this, this, this. I said, okay. So some of these things are included with this, this, and this. And I had to explain this to them because sometimes they get panicked. Like, you know, oh, I thought we were doing all of these things. And when in the fact that if you're looking at the codes, you'll see where they're combined, right? But they were just giving me this list like, okay, we think that this is what we do. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> these go together, these go together. So that's why I said it just took somebody to get in there and dig and really just look at what was going on in there. So that's what I was doing. And in the meantime, it took a lot of education going back and forth and not just with the talking to the providers, but actually like on my own. And like I said, I went to the CPT book. I looked at all that section right there. So to look and familiarize myself with those CPT codes. So that way I knew what was what. And then um, when I'm looking at the documentation, that just got easier and easier through time. So I didn't wait around for my supervisor to train me. I didn't wait around for the other coders to say, hey, let me help you out because I don't depend on other people. And that would be the thing that I would advise all of you is to stop trying to depend on other people to train you because we are professionals as medical coders. And being somebody that's been in the field for 18 years, you understand that. You understand that everybody has their role in the healthcare field and they do their things, but it also requires research and it also requires you to have that um, gumption <laughs> to go through looking through those things and trying to find different resources. And there were so many resources out there that I found for neurology. It was fantastic. I was like, wow, this is really great. And I started looking at videos on YouTube on some of those procedures as well. So that really helped me to understand. And so that was the fantastic thing. And so when I look back at that time, you know, was it stressful at first? Yes, because you're taking away my baby, <laughs> my orthopedics. You took them away from me. That's what was stressful to me. But I did get put back into that clinic and now I have it all to myself. So um, I'm happy about that and I'll always be happy about that because they're mine. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, when it comes to rescuing a clinic like I did with rheumatology, um, pulmonology, and neurology, that was some of the most exciting time, I think, too, because it takes a lot to stay engaged in coding uh, sometimes because sometimes if you get into like a clinic that is very redundant, it can get very boring quickly. And not that orthopedics was ever really boring at all. <laughs> it's not, um, but I, I feel like the field was telling me I needed to have a stretch. I had not yet done those types of clinics in, in, their, in their own, you know, like on my own, uh, <laughs> where I'm having to do all this research. I hadn't done that yet. So that was an opportunity for me to do that. And so that was how I got through that. And I was like, okay, bring it on to the next one. Bring it on, bring it on, bring it on. And so that makes me feel even more confident because I will never be without having a place to go and coding because I can code for anything. And even if I have not done that, that particular specialty um, in a while or I haven't really deep dived into that uh, specialty at all, I know it, it'll take me just a while, a couple of weeks or so, uh, to really get into it and, and learn it. Um, cardio is a very, uh, cardio is a lot like ortho in the fact that it does get complicated when you start talking about like the different procedures and things. Uh, it does get a little bit intricate. So yes, I understand the frustration there, but I also you know know that there's the American Heart Association that you can look at and that can have tons of resources that can help you to really understand the pathophysiology and even the anatomy of the heart and things like that. And so that maybe that might help you as well. But that's what I would recommend to anybody. If you're getting pulled for mother baby, you know, that's the thing that you'd have to go look up things for OBGYN and for newborns and things like that, because that's a whole like pediatrics and all that. That's a completely separate thing too. So it's gonna take you to start learning how to do your research. The coding companions are really great. 
um, for those types of things. If you really want to kind of stretch your, your know-how, um, you can go to OptumCoding.com. They do have the coding companions based on the, the whatever specialty it is. And of course, they're having the specials for the 2023 editions right now. Uh, if you're interested in those and and I would recommend those because coding companions are very helpful for really understanding the procedures because it'll give you the procedure code it'll give you the uh, the layman's definition of that procedure code and it will also give you all of the diagnoses that are associated with that procedure code along with like the RVU counts and all that other kind of stuff and so it's really great for like getting that in-depth knowledge about a particular specialty uh, but it's not anything to, you know, really stress yourself out too much. The best thing that you can do is educate yourself. And it's the same thing that happened to me when I was working uh, for the Level 1 Trauma Hospital remotely. A few years ago, I had been working for a Level 1 Trauma Hospital remotely. And um, you want to talk about <laughs> complicated stuff, Level 1 Trauma Hospital. And so, but my supervisor did say to me, she's like, oh yeah, um, but don't worry, you'll get a break in between. It's not just going to be like accidents. It's going to be other things like appendectomies and, and colonoscopies and that kind of thing. So it's going to have, you're going to have a break in between um, some of these harder uh, surgeries that you're going to have to code for because it is a level one trauma hospital. So I said, okay, that sounds great, you know. And so as I'm going through this work queue, which is why I will never work from a work queue situation ever again. <laughs> a work queue is when you all are working from the same pot and all the coders are coding based on this list. And so you pick a chart and then the next person picks the next chart and then maybe they skip a couple of charts down um, just to make sure that they don't, you know, get into the same record at the same time with somebody else. And, um, but what happens in that kind of situation is that coders get slick, especially the veteran coders, and they start skipping. And even if you tell me, oh, no, Blue, not in my organization. We, we do it differently, and they don't do that here. They do it. They do it. And even if they sit there and they dole out the, um, the encounters, or not the encounters, but the records to be coded, it still doesn't matter. <laughs> if somebody else can see that record before it gets to you, and then you get assigned to it, oh, trust me, you're gonna get some of the more difficult things. And rather, and that's what happened to me. So I worked in the evening and doing that, and then I would see a lot of really, really complicated surgeries. I mean, complicated. Not just one surgery was going on, sometimes there was three or four four different things going on. So I'm having to sit here and go through these and I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? And it was one right after another, right after another. And I'm like, okay, I can understand like some things, but this is a little too fishy, you know, like what, what's going on here? So I told my boss about it. I was like, uh, my productivity is not going to look so bueno. <laughs> and she's like, what's going on blue? And I'm like, well, when I got into the queue, I'm going through one by one by one. And as I'm going through these, all of these are difficult. So she, she did a records poll to see what I had done. And she's like, oh my gosh. She's like, oh my, no, she goes, they're skipping. Somebody is skipping. And it was quite a few of them that were skipping. So there was a meeting and, you know, no, 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 can't do that. But she was like, okay. So she worked with me on my time so that I didn't look like I was underperforming. So she gave me a little bit, um, a little bit more time for those, which was great because those are really complicated records. But it goes to show you that even though you are, I was presented with like the more difficult things, rather than just like kind of skeet out a lot of those, I went ahead and just plowed right through them. Because the, the less fear that you show coding or anything in your life, right? As far as like when a, a challenge gets presented to you, um, you know, sometimes the the thing that we do when we are afraid of something is we run away from it or of course we attack it you know and so for me i was just like no i'm gonna face this fear head on this is there's just no way and of course it looks intimidating especially when you don't know something or they're using words that you're not used to as far as like medical terminology and you're like man what does this mean you know and so but you get in there you get a dictionary or you use Google and you start Googling stuff. And then it's going to start to click and make sense. 
So rather than, again, rather than run away, I face that fear head on. And because of that, you know, again, I get pulled for certain things to help out. And so that makes me happy because I love doing education. I love educating adults. <laughs> um, and of course, I love medical coding. But it's, of course, the just the whole thing about it is that you're always learning and you're always having to challenge yourself. And that's exactly what I want to challenge all of you to do is that if you get thrown into a new clinic that you're not going to you know, sit around and complain or be fearful or worry or scared. The best thing that you can do for yourself when you're worried or scared is educate yourself. Make an action rather than thinking, 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 right? And, you know, before I, I wrap this video up, I will say this <laughs> to this individual who made this comment. You have 18 years of experience in the healthcare field. Plus, you have all of this other um, clinics that you've been working through. And I'm sure that you've gotten pretty, pretty confident at some of them, right? This is all filler for your resume now. And at this point, you can always go and apply at other places. You don't have to stay there. Now, make sure that you have a job before you leave your job naturally. Um, but if that's what you ultimately want to do, if you're so miserable, if you don't want to do this, if it's so frustrating for you um, that you're, you know, you're just like, my gosh, what am I going to do? Um, you, you always have that option of, of going someplace else. That's why I say I don't worry because I know at the end of the day, if any, God forbid, anything happened to me at my at my facility and I had to go find a job at another place, I could because there's nothing that I'm scared of when it comes to coding. You know, there's things that, there's specialties I would, ah, you know, <laughs> not my favorite, but I'll do them. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, is because I have no fear that I don't have to worry. And friends, the more you can educate yourself, the more you can spend time looking at these things and not depending on other people to train you. I, I hear that even too from, from people that I know. And it's just like, really? Like when I, when I hear them say, well, we didn't get any training on this. We didn't get any training. Did you look up things? Did you try to look up things? Because if you did, then you would say, I looked this up as I was trying to study for this. And I don't, I'm not quite understanding this. That shows uh, being proactive. And that's what you got to do, folks. That's what you got to do is you got to be proactive when it comes to learning this because no one's going to hold your hand. And oftentimes if you're getting thrown in to a clinic, um, it's because they know that you're strong enough to handle it probably, or um, maybe they don't know it. And that's what the problem is. They don't know it. So they're going to try to pass the buck off to you. And rather than you pass the buck off to somebody else or run away from it, face it head on, face it. And, and show it no fear and be like, okay, I don't understand this, but we're going to figure this stuff out because just as easily as you were able to learn medical coding, right? Not easily, but just as you were able to learn medical coding, you can learn any specialty, any specialty. And trust me, there's plenty of resources out there to help you. You just got to let your fingers do the walking and look. And if all else fails, Find yourself a tutor. You know, sometimes you may have to do that. Even if you, even though you have experience, you may have to find yourself a tutor. There's a ton of tutors on LinkedIn. I'm a tutor myself. My rate and contact information is in the description box below. Again, I am not available until after August the 15th, 2023. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. But guys, best of luck to you. And remember, for all those specialties that you are coding now, that's all going to be filler for your resume. That's going to make you much more attractive every single time you apply because this person knows a lot. They're very knowledgeable. The more knowledgeable you are, the more opportunities you get. I'm just saying. So with that said, I'm going to wrap this one up. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you have a great week weekend. <laughs> uh, if this video helped you, please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye.